Hi everyone, I think I've finally done it. The perfect lighting setup. Now obviously, clickbaity, lighting is very situation and context dependent. What I've been doing is trying to prepare my startup file for sculpt work going into the future, so doing more sculpting studies in 3D. To do that, I needed something that was kind of classical-ish lighting, something that would be adaptable, powerful, physically based, of course, given all my work into the afterglow lighting resource. So before I put something in, I'm just going to show you this geometry. It's the type of geometry that I've settled on for lighting. Let's just make that visible to the camera quickly. So there we go. Go. But now let's put something into it. Okay, so a sphere looks like nothing. You can see we've got the underlighting there. Importantly, one thing I just wanted to remember before I put something else in is that I have this ring that can be rotated around like frontally on the x-axis like that. It can also be done, you know, in other directions, but the front scan is going to be the most important. Okay, nice. Now let's put a statue into it. And boom, there we go. So here we have a lovely statue from no-3d.at on Sketchfab. Again, one of the reasons why I love using statues, as I've said before, is that when you're using just things like spheres, you can get a technical representation of where light is and how reflections fall on the object if we make it less rough, obviously. But you really need more complex geometry to see how things kind of interact dynamically. So right now I'm kind of moving that front bar we looked at up and down, scanning up and around, and the material applied to this is a type of subsurface. It's modified by an ambient occlusion. You don't need that, obviously. Obviously, you know, you can go all PBR and weird and dark and moody like whoever you want. There's nothing wrong with that. But I am very happy with this lighting setup because there are a few tricks you can do with it. Let me just reset the material a bit. So for me, the physically based lighting and what I mean by that is the physical mesh lighting. So from shader sources is useful in a great number of ways. The first of all, you can get like the softest lighting possible because it's all kind of physically projected. You can also get quite a lot of color control over the gradients of those physically present lights. Also, you get something interesting in terms of an artistic side effect where these actual light objects you can decide whether they cast a shadow on the scene given their presence right so this kind of disc shape object here can cast a shadow onto the catcher or not and it doesn't really affect the lighting on the object so as a side effect of how the lights are placed you get this kind of interesting control over the like light catcher vignetting similarly if i take that front light so this one here that i use to shift the lighting and really focus on different points of the mesh if we put that behind then that also gives us a way that we can scan the light focus on the light catcher so if we want to like try and draw the eye higher in the object we can do that if we want to draw it lower in the object we can do that as well in this startup file uh, which is available on gumroad by the way I can't believe i didn't mention that earlier the startup file is something i update occasionally on gumroad it will not include the statue it will just have like a basic subdivided cube object there but i am changing how the cameras work a little bit as well because I have started relying on the per camera resolution add-on. Go to edit preferences extensions. You can grab it from the extensions platform per camera resolution. What that does is instead of having to set the resolution for the entire blend file, you can instead do it per camera. And whenever you swap to another camera, it will automatically change to the resolution of that camera, which is fantastic if you need to output different resolutions for you know different platforms and stuff like that. So for example, I like having a square camera, which might be for things like Instagram under the camera section in the camera properties you can take custom resolution and set that to whatever you want and then i've got like a more kind of 4k one might be useful for backgrounds and stuff etc as an update to the startup file i have also prepared a few materials again with the intention of having them useful for sculpting so if i select the right object here yeah. firstly there's a plastic one which is slightly low roughness and it's a little bit sparkly i'm not sure if that's coming through in the video footage so i'll zoom in a bit and you should hopefully see that there by sparkly, I mean like really high resolution bumps almost. So that'll be an interesting one for certain types of sculpt objects, probably more hard surfacey ones. And for more organic sculpts, I've got a subsurface one, which is actually exactly what's applied to this statue here. I can apply the plastic one. It will be less appropriate for this, but it's still an interesting way of seeing how the light reacts. Obviously, I had the metallic on a kind of mid value there. And if you're doing real physically based type materials, you only want metallic to be on zero or one. So I might make an adjustment to that. But in the subsurface one, I am partially relying on ambient occlusion to do a little bit of the like curvature work. Ultimately, though, I think this is kind of very dynamic and very adaptable. And I've also balanced the uh, bloom as well. So it's a bit more subtle than it was, a bit more controlled. There's also my denoise mix node here. So you can get like in this case, I typically like doing 80% denoising. So only plug that in when you're actually doing final renders. And they'll let you choose between whether you want the original noisy output or a fully denoised version. 80% is my kind of default. What else can I show? Obviously, light catcher can be changed color as well. So if you wanted to do stuff that was, you know, a little bit artsy with your sculpt. Wow, that actually looks 
freaking fantastic, then you can do that. I constantly surprise myself when looking at things like this. Obviously, I don't know, you know, why you would want to, but you can try doing color changes on that as well, alternatively. Maybe I should also do some kind of like curtainy things at some point and possibly do a pivot for the cameras as well. Let me give that a quick try because I might include that. So let's do an empty plane axis camera, scrub the cameras. I just learned this as well, like little hotkeys. If you hold shift when you're dragging an object over something else, you can automatically parent them and keep transforms. And would you believe it, Blender just crashed. This is the 4.5.3 LTS version, I'm pretty sure. So that's annoying. But you know, thankfully I saved things. So I'm just going to set that empty again. So there we go. So we can do like slight rotations on things like that. So I'm quite happy with it. I think this would be like a really good starting point for the types of sculpt studies that I want to do going forward into the future. Again, if you want to pick up this file, obviously without the statue, you. Why is the file so expensive? It's because, if you know a bit of the history, in the past I needed to raise money to go and see a specialist for an eye issue in London. So while I was working on the Afterglow lighting resources, I put a small sample of it in the startup file and said, look, you know, here's a little sample of what I'm working on. You can support me and get something back. So that's what the project was. But over time, this startup file, quite obviously, has kind of developed into its own thing. This particular lighting setup, as you can see from the naming convention, was from Studio Cage 9 in Afterglow, but an adapted version. I actually think this is one of the best lighting setups setups I've done, but it's not actually in Afterglow because it's a modified version. So I might put it in Afterglow for a future update. But for now, this startup file is its own distinct thing. And I think it's very good at that. So if you made it this far through the video, feel free to check it out. Feel free to put any kind of light related emoji in the comments if you made it this far or something classical. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.